Hello everyone, welcome back to Movement Pivoting and Persistence. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can use a tool called Firefox Decrypt in order to extract plain text passwords and credentials from Firefox itself. So again, in the last lesson I told you if you've done Gatekeeper before, uh, you've seen this exploit uh, in person. However, if you've not done that box over on Try Hack Me that I created, uh, this will be the first time you see this. So um, if you haven't already, go ahead and install Firefox. Let's open up Microsoft Edge or whatever browser you have access to and install Firefox. And then once you've done that, go ahead and open that up. And what we need to do is log into a website of some sort. And we have access to a virtual machine running the mail server. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and use HTTP colon slash slash mail .com. We will visit Roundcube. And here you can see these credentials are already saved. I'm going to use a dot Taroli. And then these are summer 2021. I'm going to hit enter. And then we want to save these credentials. Now, Roundcube may not be configured for you to save credentials. If not, just go ahead and log into something else, whether it be your email or some other service, and you should be fine. Just don't show that off on stream if you're going to uh, show this to somebody because you may dump your usernames and passwords to your audience. Um, but in this case, uh, I have configured Roundcube to allow passwords, uh, and it may be configured by default for you. So now that we've logged in, we just quickly check to make sure we have Password saved, so we can just type passwords and settings. Look at our save logins, and you see that I have two. I have one for a trolley, and we have one for s.chisel. And we can just close this out now. We're done with Workstation 01 for now. And we can head over to Kali again. So you should already have a session. If not, go ahead and use web delivery to get a session. And then what we want to do is search for Firefox. And here you see number 55 is post multi gather Firefox creds. Go ahead and run that. So we're going to use 55. And before we do this, I'm just going to make sure that my MSF4 loop folder is empty. And it is. This is where the credential files are going to save. So go ahead and look at our options now. We see all we need is decrypt false. And we see session. We can set decrypt to true and see if the tool will do it. It's hit or miss. We'll set our session to two. I think that's our session. And let's just go ahead and hit exploit J. Set the advanced option. Okay, so we have to set disclaimer true, and then we'll run it again. And it looks like it's gonna download a program and try to do this itself. Um, if this doesn't work, then we will try it the old-fashioned way. Uh, to be completely honest, I've not done it like this before, and we see here it didn't work. So let's go ahead and just um, unset Disclaimer, and we'll unset uh, the other options. So Options, and we'll unset Decrypt. Now let's go ahead and hit Exploit again. And we can see all of these files saved to the root MSF for loot directory. So let's go ahead and open that up and we need to change the name of these associated files. So I'm going to drag this over here. So we need to look for those files. So here we see there's cert in this one. We need to change this to cert9. So go ahead and rename this cert9.db and hit enter. We need to look for the one that has key4 in it and we'll rename this one to key4.db and delete the dot bin and hit enter. We have login. This will be logins.json. So let's go ahead and delete all that. We'll do logins.json and we'll delete the dot bin. We need cookies. So we'll rename cookies. So we'll delete all of this. We'll do cookies.sqlite and hit enter. And then here we have signons.sqlite. This one isn't required, but you can do it if you want. And then finally, we have this other sign-ons as well. I'm not sure what the difference is, to be completely honest with those two. But the four that we really need is cookies, cert9, key4, and logins. So now what we need to do is download Firefox Decrypt from GitHub. And here's the link, and here is what it looks like. Just go ahead and use code, copy the link, and then get clone to the, whatever directory you wish. For me, I've saved this in my op directory, so I'm going to open up a new terminal. 
So we'll make this bigger. We're going to cd opt Firefox decrypt ls. And we see here Firefox decrypt. So let's just run Firefox decrypt. We need to run it in the directory where the files are stored. So again, msf4 loot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And here you can see that it parses these four or these files that we have, these five files, and it outputs uh, what it finds for plain text credentials in the website. So here you see again, uh, mail.mayorsec.com, we have s.chisholm, and we have Aaron Taroli. This is a up-to-date, brand new install of Firefox. So it doesn't matter the age of Firefox, it works on new and old um, downloads alike and is really, really powerful. So just keep that in mind when you are pillaging uh, a machine. And the way we would kind of know if Firefox is even installed from the command line is if we just sessions i2, we run post multi, or I think it's gonna be windows, recon, enum. So bear with me, post multi, recon, enum services, which one are you? gather enum services. There we go. And if it's not in services, it'll be in applications. So and I think it's actually going to be an application. So we want to enumerate applications. Sorry. And here we can see Firefox is installed. So this would be one way that you would be able to know that Firefox is on this machine and that you may want to actually use Firefox decrypt uh, to look for those stored credentials. So again, if you've done Gatekeeper before, uh, you know this one well. Otherwise, if you've not done Gatekeeper, this is probably the first time you've seen it. And I really, really hope you've learned something. This will wrap up Section 5. Uh, I, I'm really proud of you guys to make it this far to date uh, and hope that you're really enjoying the course so far. Uh, in Section 6, we're going to do a deep dive into domain enumeration using PowerView. And it's going to be really important. So make sure that you're uh, taking really good notes and paying attention and uh, really following along and doing all of those uh, different enumeration tasks. Uh, but I will see you over there in section six, and uh, thank you for joining.